One of the most unusual deadly animal encounters I've ever had was right here in Sydney. It was just off Manly Harbour and it was with what is one of the most venomous creatures in the whole world but something that is utterly innocuous, something that you would never ever spot unless you were really, really looking for it. It's called a blue-ringed octopus. Now, they are much, much smaller than you would imagine. Even a fully grown adult blue-ringed octopus is smaller than a ping-pong ball, and they have remarkable cryptic, that is camouflage coloration. They have the ability, as with so many animals in their group, the octopuses, squid and cuttlefish, not just to be able to change their color, but to be able to change the entire texture of their skin and to be able to change their, their whole body shape to blend in with their environment. So the blue-ringed octopus can take on any color from sort of white through to very, very dark brown, pucker its skin up into wrinkles and make itself look like whatever it is it's sitting on. So I went out with three other guys and we were freediving, that is diving just purely on breath hold, not using scuba gear, just going around looking into bottles and cracks and crevices and underneath rocks looking for this incredibly beautiful tiny creature. Eventually, I wish I could say I'd found it myself, but that would be a lie. One of the other guys found this tiny little octopus and brought it up in a, uh, in a small aquarium so that we could look at it on dry land. The blue ringed octopus is so named because it has flash colours, which are some of the most dramatic you will ever see in the whole natural world. These flash colours are used, presumably, to, to intimidate a foe, to scare away a predator that might want to be feasting on the blue ringed octopus. And all of a sudden you'll go from a very drably coloured animal, something that could just be a kind of lemon yellow, to something that has the most extraordinary neon blue and black lined colours that just pop up all over its body. And they are like something you'd expect to see in a neon nightclub rather than on a tiny little animal like this. But of course the reason that we were thinking about putting these animals on the Debbie 60 was not down to their flash colours, it was down to their venom. Now, like all of the animals in this group, they're called the cephalopods or the head-footed animals. They have a hard beak at the center of their arms, which they can use to envenomate their prey. So they will actually nibble into the hard shell of something like a crab and dribble venom all over it, which dissolves the soft parts underneath the shell. This venom is, is so strong that even on a tiny little octopus, it is enough to overcome a human being. People are, are very, very rarely hurt, and it's always if they've been deliberately handling a blue-ringed octopus. But the venom is said to be totally painless, and nobody knows that they've been bitten until all of a sudden their heart and their lungs just start to shut down. And the only way that you can really save someone who's been bitten by a blue-ringed octopus is just to ventilate them for as much as 24 hours until the venom leaves their system. It's extraordinary that an animal that is smaller than a ping-pong ball has the power to completely overcome an animal as large as me. But for me, the reason that it should go on the Deadly 60 is not that. It's not because of its danger to human beings. It's because it has the power to dissolve the shell of a crab and munch on its insides. I think that's utterly fascinating. And there's no doubt they're one of the most beautiful creatures we've ever featured on the Deadly 60.